Institute of Psychology, Kajan University, Islamabad. Uh, and I, I really, I mean, I personally, I'll be very uh, much interested to listen to her expert views uh, because the students have undergone a very difficult situation when they were, uh, I mean, uh, experiencing this uh, online, offline, offline, online, partly online, partly offline kind of studies. Uh, how they, it has affected the students at large and even the faculty members. So you should be talking about post-COVID higher education responses, recovery and resilience. Professor Dr. Rubina Sava, over to you please. Thank you very much Dr. Zia. I am very much grateful to be here and uh, to Pakistan Academy of Sciences in Sambar and Inter Academy of uh, I am really honored to be here among such a learned community. Uh, and I was a little scared in the beginning because I am only one who is not the vice chancellor. So uh, <laughs> you have given, asked me to present before time, so it's all right. So uh, I was listening the presentations uh, from the morning in this session, and this was really really uh, informative uh, workshop actually. Uh, the topic I'm going to talk is actually uh, purely higher education. Uh, it may be related to the food stability and economic crisis and everything because you know uh, for all kinds of problems we have to see the psychological uh, uh, dynamics or psychosocial problems. I think I need not to go in detail about the uh, current statistics about COVID-19. All of us know that the, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the, all sectors of our life, initially we were, of the, uh, we were worried about health and uh, maybe economic uh, crisis. Later we realized that education is the second most critical area uh, that we are facing. And UNESCO uh, has given some facts and figures like this figure show that uh, uh, what was that time was the uh, school closure status from March 2020 to February 2021. This data is based on 120 countries. Pakistan is also included in this data. You can see that uh, uh, this is like a zigzag situation and you can say still we are facing COVID-19 and there is still uncertainty that uh, either we are uh, in the era of post-COVID or not yet. So I think now onwards we need to think about that we have to uh, plan and reorganize everything uh, considering that uh, either we may face the COVID-19 uh, uh, and third wave uh, and fourth wave problems, but we have to reorganize ourselves and we need to move forward. Like all other higher education institutes, Kajajan University has also planned many, uh, has taken some initiatives and actually people psychology has also done some excellent work like uh, uh, organized some series of webinars, online counseling services, provided guidance and counseling at our physical center and uh, we have uh, published special issues of COVID-19 to disseminate uh, awareness among students, faculty, and uh, community as well. Uh, we have conducted some very good uh, research projects, and we are also planning courses that will be held uh, in October 2021. Uh, when, uh, well, uh, I am very glad that Dr. Rasa Mitty has uh, talked about the positive, uh, I have also said that there are positive things that we have learned from pandemic. Yes, this is fact and there are many things positive that we have learned. But I will really focus on the misdeeds and problems and concerns of students and faculty and cities. Um, based on some indigenous data that was conducted uh, by me, my students and some of my colleagues, we have um, uh, found that Mainly, university students experience online learning hazards for achievement, academic issues, psychological problems, and uh, aggression. And aggression, they were more passive, frustrated, and behavioral kind of aggressive uh, uh, activities. And uh, 
when this data was collected, I have seen that the initial tools or measures that we generally use to measure the students' pressures and situation, they were not encompassing the current situation. So we were supposed to develop and devise new uh, scales to measure the because the expression of aggression is totally different, the stresses, nature is totally different in this pandemic. Uh, then uh, we have also find that uh, anxiety, stress, depression, fear of death, xenophobia, OCD, and uncertainty about future was the uh, main features. Then we have we also found that uh, during uh, first year period or during the pandemic, the multiple types of violence and tortures were also increased. Uh, there was increase in domestic violence, there was increase in child abuse, uh, maybe uh, due to a couple of factors that we will discuss later that quarantine period, lockdown period, people were not able to uh, move around. So due to less spaces in houses, so it has been observed that violence and torture was increased, particularly domestic violence. Then we have the other study, uh, students uh, have uh, missing the uh, campus socialization, group study issues, and collaborative studies, and instructed the responses. So these were some general issues. And if we see from closure of institute to the uh, online classes journey of students, faculty, and uh, institutes, we can see some problems are common that student face, faculty face, and organization phase as well. Like uh, all of us know that there was connectivity issue, uh, it was same for teachers, for students, and uh, for all other uh, personnel, uh, staff as well. And uh, at the same time, we have faced uh, work uh, place, uh, uh, work stations. Uh, like students were not able to fix the virtual space for classes at home. Uh, sometimes we have to take class uh, sitting uh, in the whole family and, and that was uh, quite frustrating for uh, students, especially for undergrad students as well because they reported in some groups and some case studies that come to table when they were taking classes uh, along with their parents and along with their siblings and they were feeling like their privacy is better. And same was with faculty members, like uh, they were needing workstations at home. And you know that uh, in most of uh, private organizations, like uh, uh, I know Teradata is an uh, IT organization, they have provided uh, even uh, uh, furniture to their employees. And some other locally, uh, we have also seen there were some other organizations as well. Uh, who help the uh, uh, employers to uh, make workstations at home and uh, provide uh, internet facilities. Like some private universities, very few, but they have also mapped that in what areas people need uh, some devices or gadgets for uh, any connection for internet and they have facilitated their business. But we all know that it is was not possible uh, for the whole student population for the whole uh, university faculty or institute. But all the problems that we faced were basically due to few major mechanisms. One was uncertainty. This uncertainty was actually about our future. We were not clear at any stage during uh, COVID-19 that's when our universities are going to be open, uh, when we are going to be trying our basic classes. So due to this uncertainty, there was a lot of frustration. Then the major uh, setback, there was economic crisis. This economic crisis was mainly faced by universities because they were not getting fees of students, like schools were not uh, getting fees of their students. and. Uh, uh, and students uh, who have already paid the fees, they were uh, feeling like empty, how to go home and how to spend the life or the rest of the time. I have a few facility that can I request you to please try to get it up in one minute or okay. so.
Oh, one minute. Okay. So I'm not going to in problems. We all know that what were the impacts and uh, uh, how the trauma uh, in cycle uh, runs between uh, all the segments of life, like students, pregnancy, or the staff following what the organization. Uh, what I'm going to propose is actually how to move forward uh, based on some existing uh, literature and recent research is done in international universities and in our university. I have uh, proposed a three-step um, model. That is actually, uh, the step one is to uh, collect the nationwide data on the basis of lessons learned. Second is to make the priorities. Um, and third one is the action plans from where we can move from the boundary to growth. Uh, when we go into the detail, uh, we can see that uh, we, uh, our universities, our government and higher education commission, Pakistan has provided some facilities and they have uh, done a lot during pandemic to facilitate all of us. But we need to see what facilities worked and what did not work. For this, we would be needing a nationwide data or maybe university-wise data to see what is the need assessment because all of us know that uh, it will be different requirements for universities geographically. Uh, if we see different universities may have some, uh, their needs may be different from the universities in big cities. Uh, then we need to prioritize what is needed in at what place. On the basis of priority area, we need to revise our existing policies, our regulatory restrictions, and we need to include all of the students. Like, uh, if you look at that, I have listened that our education minister was, uh, um, he was uh, actually um, participating in a coalition of UNESCO where uh, his uh, uh, slogan was that all means all. We have seen that in, during this pandemic, we have uh, this circulated uh, this, uh, very students, like disabled students, and many students who were from remote area, they may not be able to join the classes or continue the semester. They have previous semester. So for this, after prioritizing, we need to get collaborations and coordinations uh, from interdisciplines and from uh, 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 community and from uh, sponsors. After this collaboration, we need to uh, go forward with action plan. This will be actually based on the uh, main four concepts that like developing skills to mount back from crisis to clarity with development skills now. And for this plan, uh, five key components can be considered. That is, first is to develop the hope. Second is uh, to realize or to make aware people about their personal responsibility. Uh, very important is to develop the resilient education program uh, where we need some policy makers and authorities and the student makers who can make some changes and policies and rules uh, and regulations. Then we need to sensitize the broad population, the general population about the civic programs and civic education. And finally, we need to provide social, financial information and uh, knowledge support to all our students who are dropouts or like us. I have also given some uh, uh, practical uh, things that can be taken under all these concepts, but due to shortage of time, I'm not going to detail it. If you like, you can uh, take my um, slides. And, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Rubina I'm sorry, I have uh, this unpleasant responsibility of uh, uh, interrupting my honorable colleagues. Uh, I, I request Professor Shinwai Saab that we may actually share these presentations for uh, uh, information and guidance of all participants and even Ahmed Usa, but even afterwards, would like to benefit from these recommendations. Uh, now I, 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 I understand or I 